Ayatash. How you doing? Uh, right. I downloaded your picture as you can see. And I'm going to uh, just play about with it and do, do some things that I think you might find useful. Um, and then run through while I'm doing it. I can sort of talk about what the things do and and you can decide for yourself whether whether it's going to be appropriate to you or not. Um, so first thing you probably think about is, is layers, isn't it? That's what gets everybody stuck. And the way to think about layers is sort of like the old traditional animation. Uh, well, the way they used to do animation was like they used to put like a transparent cell over the picture and then they, they change the cell every time to obviously make it animated. But like layers is, is like that, it's sort of like a transparent screen on top of it. So if, if you make a layer then you can sort of draw on that or do whatever you want on that layer and you'll be able to protect the layer underneath. So I'll sort of, sort of show you an example of that. Uh, so again, I've opened up your image, and the first thing you see is like it's closed, it's locked, so you shouldn't be able to do. Well, you can't do anything. You can't do things, but um, but the best thing to do is just unlock it, and then you get the the full layer uh, thing. Right. So if I open up a new layer, and let's go to our color that's going to be seen. And with, and with this, you can sort of scribble over it. Uh, and again, if you turn that layer off, you've still got your image. So if you, if you don't do anything on this image, see how it's highlighted there? If you don't do anything on top of that layer, it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, but, but it's a computer, so I mean, I use a lot, of, use a lot of shortcuts on the keyboard. It'd be, it'd be useful to sort of try and get your head into the shortcuts as well, because some of them, I mean, just for quickness and stuff like that. So, uh, right. So, but the thing with layers is, you can once you've you've sort of done what you think that you need to do. Uh, you can sort of play with it a bit, bit further. So on the layer, make sure you've got it highlighted. And then let this thing here is sort of like a filter list. So you can sort of play a bit with that. And that's mostly the thing that you need to do is just sort of play a bit with it yourself. And you can see the effects that it's having. Um, so just keep playing about with it until you find something that you would like to that would suit what you're needing to do, kind of thing, you know. Uh, and again, you could turn the layer off. You've still got your photograph. Uh, so that was, and then you've got all your opacity kind of thing, so you can create it and um, make it as visible as you want it to be. The other thing you can do as well is you can you can double tap the layer, which will bring up this box, and this will do. Like, there's a lot of effects you've probably seen, like when people do like advertisements and stuff like that. They'll have like effects on it, whereas like it'll look like a shadow or drop shadow, or it'll be like highlighted. Like the stuff that you can do on here as well. Oh, maybe I need to uh, I need to make that more vibrant. Yeah. Uh, that? Um all right, yeah. Okay. All right, it came up there. Yeah, so again like uh, the, right, so that's obviously an extreme version of it. 
And so you probably have seen uses of this before on advertisements and posters and that about the place. But again, this is just something I would suggest just playing about with it until you get until you get used to it. Um, but I mean, I, I would suggest just being quite subtle if you are going to use it. Sometimes it gets played about with too too much kind of thing. And it looks photoshopped. I mean, you probably won't use it because obviously you're doing photography stuff, so you're probably more looking for grades and filters and stuff like that for the photography stuff. But I mean, if you know what you're doing, if people see what you're doing with Photoshop, they might ask you to do uh, posters and stuff like that as well. So I mean, the gradient is quite good. But again, even with a gradient, everything, everywhere you see this sort of blend mode thing, this normal thing, means you can add like a filter on top of filters, you know. So like, like for example, if I do that and then look if I copied, oh, if I copied the duplicate layer and copied it again, you could actually put a different filter on top of the filter. Usually if you go to either multiply or uh, overlay is the mostly the other ones. But I mean you can ju again just play it in until you get the sort of effect that you've I mean again like, as Bob Ross would say the happy accident sometimes you get some stuff that you wouldn't expect and you just be like oh wow that looks cool. That's generally how I work. Uh, but then again, you can go back in and just muck about it. Just don't be scared of it, man, you know. And, and, but I mean, now you understand what, what the layers are. Like, if you if you take that layer, your picture's fine again, you know. But again, that sort of stuff, again, isn't going to sort of operate too much well with doing your grades and your grading and stuff like that, you know. There's, there is other things that you could do. What I would suggest using quite a bit is a thing called gradient maps. Now, the, the good thing about gradient maps is you can sort of run through and experiment with it and then you can change it after the fact. So a lot of times when you're doing all this stuff, like if you're doing that there and then you sort of like, oh, if I just change the colour of that you know, then you'd have to go to like a, like a colour overlay and then try and blend that in with what you're doing. So it makes it a bit of a pain. But if you, I mean, if you click down here and go to a gradient map, this is sort of like adding, adding like a colour filter to, to your camera. Uh, a good one, I think you could use is maybe doing like a sepia tone. So that if you go to um, that brown, uh, I'll just cancel that actually. And if you click the top bar is the, op the opacity and then the bottom one is you want to add a colour. So you can actually add colours all the way over here. So you come, you come in and oh that looks very nice actually. Uh, and then you could reverse it. So that's what I was on about with the gradient, the gradient maps. And again, this you can go into the gradient map and go into the opacity, and you could get it to whatever you like. Or like we did with the other one, you can actually go in and use the filters. Uh, and again, you'd be surprised that, uh, I mean, that looks pretty cool there. That actually looks like a 1970s sort of photograph or something. And that's just a simple, that's just a simple uh, gradient map. But the good thing about the gradient map is, let, let's say if you wanted to change it or muck about with it, and if you double, if you click, double click on this, little section here it'll bring up it'll bring the properties back up and then you just click on it again and then you can muck a bit with it 
the colors and stuff like that. So there you go, there's like a, a tinge of blue through it. Or you could get a tinge of red, make it a little bit warmer. A tinge of green, you know. Again, just playing about. Uh, and again, you can mix and match with obviously with different settings on the overlays and stuff. I mean, this is probably. And the thing is, look, once you go. I mean, obviously, you know, Lightroom and stuff like that, you've been using it. But I mean, you could set up your image here and then take it into Lightroom and then you could muck about with it through that kind of thing, you know. So once you like with this one here, you get like a high contrast. But then, like, the red's too much, so you could take it into Lightroom and you could actually soften the red a bit and stuff like that, you know. And sometimes with Photoshop, there's bloody too much to too much to do. Um, so I'll leave that with that. And again, like I said, because it's a new layer, uh, your original photo is still there. So like, if you saved this just now, you would have to save it as like a JPEG. So I'd usually go to export, export as JPEG. I mean, if, you, if you're going to keep it for web-based, if you're going to share it on the web, I would go to like 60%. And with 60%, you won't actually lose any quality. Uh, not a lot of quality anyway. But where it will actually drop, so if we go to 100, you can see that the, the file size is 1.8. But if you dropped it to 60, it's about half that. So if you can send a bit of the um, file size and stuff like that, then. Uh, but if you save it naturally through Photoshop, it will save it. So save as. It will save it as a PSD. And then once you open that up, so let me. Uh, so, so save that. And then I'll close, uh, I'll close the image. Then you can open it back up. And when you open it back up, it'll have it separated into the separate layers. So you still have your original photograph and whatever sort of fancy stuff you've done on top of it. So what I tend to do is I'll, if I'm working on stuff, like let's see what I'm working on at the minute. Is this so you see all those layers and like each, each layer has got like this little separate like attachment done to it you know it's like but then when I when I save it when I want to present it to the uh, this is this is like a an album cover for, for a band kind of thing you know so once I uh, I save it I'll save it as a JPEG and then send the people who it belongs to uh, the JPEG image, which is a compressed image which doesn't have all these layers on it. Uh, but for me personally, I'll keep the JPEG image, uh, the, the PSD image, because then it's like if I see something in the future where I'm like, oh, hold on, that's, I don't like that, I need to change that, I can open up the image again and I'll still have all these layers. And like, I don't really do it too much, but the best thing to do is like, uh, s sort of uh, name them. <laughs> it helps, especially when you've got quite a bit of layering. See, so I haven't done it here because I've been working on this later, but I'll take a wee break and I'll sort of just go through it all and I'll, I'll rename the ones I need to, I need to kind of thing. Uh, but getting back to your stuff, let's see with this, let's see if you wanted to add a bit of texture and stuff like that, maybe like do, I've seen photos where there's been like a, a person's face and there's been like trees and all that sort of thing going through it. 
Oh, I'm not swapping the bridge until I did that. And what, I, what I'll have on my, my hard drive is I'll actually have um, a separate folder. And this just is just for resourcing. This is just loads of different images and stuff like that that I might, might not use. Anything that I like, I'll sort of grab it and maybe use it in, in a future in a future uh, project. Uh, so let's open a few of these and see what we can do. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Okay. Uh, so what I tend to do is use this and that's, that will allow you to grab the image convert to normal. Right. Why is it doing that? Oh. Um, oh, probably open too much, but I don't know. I'll let three of them. Once you get it done to the one, then it's pretty much the same. Oh, I close that. Oh, right. So this is your, and we'll just drop three of those textures over the top of your image. And again, they will be on different layers. So again, you're not affecting that your initial image. You're not affecting that at all. So let's. Uh, Readjust it so, and again, the good thing about this, like what I was on about before, is you've got your filters. So, like if you go into your filters and see, that's how those work. So, you're overlaying, well, it's like a stone roses thing, uh, and again, it's up to you. I mean, just playing a bit with it. And you'll see, maybe see something that you'll like. And but the, other, the thing is, as well, you can actually add it on top of the layer as well. So you could actually go into uh, the razor tool. You've got your opacity as well, which is just the, the strength of the rubber kind of thing. Uh, and then you could look on and slightly erase what you would like kind of thing, you know. So you can sort of have all this in the background. All the texture in the background, and then you could bring out the face a lot more, you know. I mean, this is why it's so so much better with a Wacom tablet. If you had to do all this with the mouse or the touchpad, it, it can be a bit more difficult, kind of thing. So yeah, so if I switch off your layer, your photograph, then you can see where I've rubbed it. And again, now that they're here, you can sort of see under or understand the the cell, the animation cell thing is what I was talking about before. And again, you can. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to make, if you're editing on the layer, you make sure it's highlighted. Because if you're highlighted on your on your picture, and then you start like drawing on it, you're drawing on this image on this layer, and you don't want that. You want to keep that as clear as possible. So like even if you want to, if you don't want to draw on those layers, just open up a new layer, and then draw on that layer. So you can. I mean it's. I mean, if you don't know about Photoshop, it, it seems quite daunting kind of thing, you know, but after about 10, 15 minutes of getting into understanding it, once it's been explained to you, then you'll find it easy as hell, you know. It's just the other stuff, you know, with the with the, the gradient tools and the masking tools and stuff like that, but they're all sort of immediate to, 
uh, expert level kind of thing. Uh, right, so let's uh, let's put another layer on just to sort of see what it's like. So manipulate it. I don't know why that's broken. That should come up. All right, that, that's one. Yeah. Maybe hold shift. And then go and sort of use the filters and stuff. But again, I mean, I just sort of, do, I'm doing this for more painterly sort of more artistic thing. You're looking at it probably more from a photography standpoint. So you have a you have a fair idea in you what you want and what you like. But I'm just I'm sort of showing you what what is possible with with it, you know. There's a lot you can do with it. I mean that, to me that was something quite nice and again I would go over and and just do the Fill them a bit better and sort of see it. And again, you could, sp I mean, I'm just running over this man, but you, if you were going to do anything that was going to be for an exam or for more personal work, then you would you would take a bit more time on it, kind of thing, you know. I mean, that image there that I'm, that I'm using is <laughs> sort of three weeks worth, worth of bloody work, do you know what I mean? But, um, Right, so let's let's talk more something about you wanted to cut this out and using the lasso to where there's three way three ways you can do that. And that's this little lasso tool here. It's difficult to use this one or the, or this one of the three because you need to sort of draw with it. And uh, if you're using the trackpad or a mouse it's very difficult and with a Wacom tablet it's still difficult <laughs> I tend not to bother with that one because there's been umpteen times where I've sort of done like um, I've been like gone all the way around to about here and then went up oh, and then fuck had to, had to go all oh, right and uh, stop on oh, Jesus, you know, and especially with a, a mouse sort of trackpad. That's, I mean, I'm I'm doing it with my, my way coming, and you can see it's still not. You sort of have to hold your breath when you do it. Um, so yeah, once you draw around it, you go up to edit. Uh, I need to be on the layer. Up to edit. Copy, uh, paste, and then you can see it's added a new layer, and uh, it's copied it over. That's one way of doing it. And then what you'd have to do is you'd have to go in and uh, either go in with the rubber. Actually, no, look. Sort of handcraft it out like that, but all the way around. And obviously, you could get that good at it. I mean, I've seen illustrators on YouTube, man, they just go and just cut the thing out, and you're just like, Yeah, that's not me. Uh, right, so the other way you can do it, and this is the, the way I prefer to do it. So, I'm back on the layer again. I'll go into the polygon one. The polygon one is sort of like you just put points in and it was, you can sort of track it all the way along. So you click it once, click it twice, and each, each click you do, it drops a point on it. So using it this way, you can just be a little bit closer and a bit more controlled on it, you know. Uh, and you can do cuts and I mean, once you practice this a wee bit, you get, you can get fairly good at it, kind of thing, you know. So, oh, and there we go. Uh, right, 
Okay, so let's just cut it quick. And then again, you can add a copy, edit, paste, and then again, it's opened up a new layer. What we can do then is what I do after this is once I've got it cut out, you can see these four sections up here. Click on the third one, and what that will allow you to do is sort of cut holes in it. And then Control and X to cut. And then with that, you can sort of get it right in there. And I prefer doing it this way because it's like if you make them, if you try and do it all in one and you make one slip, then you have to go all in one again. So at least this way you've got you can do a wee section, right? That's done. Next section, that's done. Um, until you become sort of more pro professional at that kind of thing, you know. I mean, you can go in with a with the eraser and actually erase it all out again, but this is so much neater as well. And the thing is, is like you can actually get it to a point because the computer's actually made the cut. You can actually get it to a point where it's like a it's so much straighter than what the when the what the racer would do, you know. So let's see. Okay. So it's so much cleaner kind of thing, you know. Uh, and again, your image is fine because you've done it on the layer, right? So the, the third way of doing it, and I wouldn't suggest doing this. Especially something that's go that's if you're using something that's got like varying contrast and so if you've got something that's going from like blue to in a sharp cut to green, then it, the computer will automatically find those sort of that cut in between them. But because of this, you've got like varying colours of, or some are like close together kind of thing. The computer is going to find it difficult to separate these, and especially like with the uh, minute hairs and stuff like that. The computer is going to uh, struggle. And with this, this is sort of like an automatic thing. So you sort of click on it, and you can sort of see it dragging itself along. Uh, I'll just do this as quickly as I can. You can see it like, sort of bundling about there. And, and the computer's not as good as the human eye, so. So you sort of have to wait to. It does its little click thing. Yeah, see, sometimes it just doesn't work as well as you'd expect it to. Uh, so control C, control V for a new cut. Yeah. So you can see how much a bloody mess that is, and you'll probably find if you do use this sort of technique, you'd spend more time actually fixing this. As opposed to the the sort of quickness in what it pretends to do kind of thing, you know. So it's like even bits in there but it's actually uh, into the arm. So you would have to push the arm back out and uh, and then cut this off, you know. But you can use like the, the polygon again just to oh. uh, just to cut it out again. Or you could even use the the lasso to if you get sort of confident and drawn on it. Mm. I don't know where that's going. 
something. Yeah. But as you can see, it's, it'll take just as much bloody work to fix it as it would have to cut it out in the first place, you know, with a polygon one. That's why I always use a polygon one, because it's sort of more it's like methodical and you've got better control over it as well. Um, so let's see other things that you could use. Let me get rid of the layers again, so it looks like we're starting from a new... So things like uh, photo manipulation and maybe adding colours and stuff like that and keeping the image but sort of tweaking it and maybe doing things but so let's use selection tool. I've got it on the circle. Let's just go in. Nope, that's not right. Um, let's see. I mean, a good thing about Photoshop is because it's a computer, it stores everything, you know. Right, so I've, j I've just drawn those circles, but again, We've only got the one layer, which is your original photograph. So once you made the selection, add a new layer. So again, you're not drawn on your old layer. And then like, uh, let's go to paint bucket. Let's pick a color and drop on. And then again, you could go to like your fills. I mean, you look scary enough as it is, man, but, <laughs> yeah, um, so let's see, oh, why is that not coming down, ah, oh, there we go, there's a uh, overlay here, and then to come off of that, you just. And then again, you could go in with the rubber. I mean, that was very basic. But it'll get, maybe get you something that you could play with later on as well. But adding uh, adding different images, so I'll just grab it and pop it on. And again, it's opened up a new layer. So, and then with this, you could go back into your filters again. And you can sort of do what you want there, you know. Obviously, um, Get it to size. Oh, well, but I mean, you could use all these in conjunction with, um, with like a nice gradient map, you know. Um, let's see. Excuse me. Right, so we're saying again with the with the the animation sort of layers kind of thing that you uh, so what like the way that this, this is organized so whatever's on top so if you if you got your animation layers like that and you're looking through the animation layers the one that's on top is the one you, you see obviously so it's the same with this so whatever's on top 
is going to be the highest layer. So that's the one if you're looking down on it or if you're looking at it like that. That's the one that's going to, that's, uh, that's going to be the first one to your eyes kind of thing, you know. So like, um, and because we set this one to a filter, it sort of puts a transparency to it. So if you want it to be more stand out, and it, you see you can revert it back to the original image. But if you dropped it underneath, it would take on the effects of the layer on top. If, that's, um, if, if that makes sense. Uh, so again, if we put that, that's the eyes. So we put the eyes to normal. Let's see, make the eyes a different color. Uh, so is it control? And if you click that little, so control and click that, it will actually highlight. It will actually highlight what you've. So control and it'll highlight kind of thing, you know. Uh, so let's try a different color just so I can show you what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, scary. Um, so yeah, because the eyes are on the top layer, you that's, that's the thing that you see first and then it'll drop down and you see through the other layers. But then again, if you put it underneath the top layer, I hope I make that makes sense, man. But it's sort of hard to explain, but I mean, a good thing. I mean, from a photography point of view, on a oh yeah, if you want to get back to the gradient map, double click on that, and I'll bring up. Your colors. There's already preset ones here. You can actually add a lot more. Actually, there's uh, like nettles. Go to your pen. Photographic toning. So these are probably actually got. I oh, see. That's maybe that may be cool for you. That was pretty cool. But you can make all these up. You see, I mean, bloody colors like this. Now. Special effects, this is going to be weird. Oh, yeah. oh nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, this is all. Actually, it's pretty funky, actually. Uh, yeah, and then again, you can go into your layers, or your filter, sorry, and you can still even muck a bit with that. I think that's a bit too dark. But again, you can even go in and go into the opacity and. But again, you have a better eye than what I want. Uh, but again, like I say, your original image is safe as long as you keep it on a separate layer. That's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, that's about that's about adjustment layers. Yeah, adjustment layers. All right. Well, adjustment layers is just exactly what it sounds like. So you've got your original image, and if you come down to the this little uh, circle with the black and white on it, this will give you like uh, an adjustment that you can do on it. So you've got into like brightness and contrast. And it's pretty much essentially what it says, kind of thing. You know? uh, curves, you know, so you can sort of play with the overall. Yeah, and again, it keeps those two as a layer, 
kind of thing. So at any time you don't you don't want to you can you can switch them off or you can delete them. Yeah. Some of the others. What else we got? Color balance. Yeah. So again, that's for the more photography sort of side of things. This is this is more what you'll be after, I suppose, isn't it? And like I said, with the layers before, so that if you've got something that's on top of that, and you draw on it, it'll be above that. But if you put it underneath, it'll have a small, it'll have an effect on it. And again, if you double click that, you can get back to. Yeah. And see, it's having absolutely no effect on it. I mean, that before it was just having a slight effect. Yeah, yeah you can see that the redness is affecting it now. But yeah, I mean, what else? Well, liquefy, I don't, I don't think you need to worry about that. The gradient too, as well. I mean, I'd use a gradient tool all the time. It's sort of like the gradient map, but it's a bit more simplistic than what that is. Uh, so start a new layer, and if you hold that, and you see up here, you click on that, and that's essentially the gradients, what the gradient map is. It's just a more basic version, and then you can sort of... And um, do the radio one actually. This is all what I use it for mostly. We did reverse it. And then go into the filters. But again, like I said, if you don't do it on that layer, you'll be fine. Always make another layer. If you're going to if you're going to change something on your image, and you're going to do a new thing on your image. It's generally best to make a new layer, and that's just in here, right next to the, the dustbin. Just make a new layer, and then it'll save you panicking about what if I destroy it? What if I you know, most people that don't sort of just come into using Photoshop, that's the main thing that they worry about, you know, so I'm going to break it, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, some of these might not even do much, but that's, yeah. Yeah, well, so I hope that that helps you a bit and get you a better understanding of it. So the main thing you want to do, don't worry about the fact that this is over, this is usually over here. Isn't it? Uh, I just put it over there because it's close at hand. But um, so for moving things around, yeah, for the lip tools, you can do. This is just help for helping you select stuff. Your lasso tool. Uh, Paintbrush, I don't think you need much of that. Paint bucket and gradient tool. Gradient tool, you've just seen me. Paint bucket. Paint bucket, you just you could just cover over it. And then I like, like to use this sometimes as well. But the thing is, is it gives you like a, a constant sort of cover over it. It could be quite good if you were doing like a, uh, like a sepia tone. Thing, you know. And then you could uh, well, that is quite cool. Isn't it? And then yeah. But I mean just just play a bit of it. There's a there's a lot of stuff that you probably wouldn't even uh, worry about just now. I would think just sort of practice a bit with him and get used to all this sort of stuff before you before you get in and try anything else, kind of thing, you know. 
I mean, you've got you've got Lightroom. Most of the stuff you can do in here, you could actually do in Lightroom. But Lightroom's a bit more nuanced for photographs. It's just that everybody here is Photoshop. I mean, the way Photoshop is, is Photoshop's like a, a collection of tools, which are good, but they're not the best that the tools can be. It takes you extra work in order to to drag it out of Photoshop. Uh, so that, let's say you've got to image and the adjustment tools that I showed you down here you can actually do like a, an adjustment level all up here kind of thing you know uh, no that's not what I wanted to be in yeah so the brightness and the curves and yeah you know, so you can play a bit with it until, until your heart's content until you find out what you actually want kind of thing you know uh, yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, to say like we Photoshop is just like a, a a toolbox, but each tool it's, it's it's good, but it's not the best it can be. But for, for, from photography, Lightroom is probably the best way, especially when you're doing like a gradient layer or a colorization layer. But you could, the more you know about Photoshop, the better, anyway. Uh, yeah, well, any questions? Don't be scared to ask. Uh, I'm always here, mostly, so, yeah. You take it easy, and I'll see you soon, yeah? Bye.